Hello everybody, JT Bear here. I'm just doing a little quick work on the No Power Aquaponic Garden and I thought I would show you guys just some of the extra maintenance that goes along with this. Um, you know, basically the downfall of not having electricity doing most of it for us is that we have to go back to doing it ourselves. That is the fundamental difference with the NPAG Garden. So, let's get started. With the no power aquaponics, water quality is one of the biggest issues that you're going to face. And as you can see, I've just kind of stirred things up here because I'm about to do some water quality stuff. And my tank water, you know, normally it looks pretty good, but normally it's pretty settled. Right now you can see all of that filth floating in there. And I'm going to show you just two of the easiest ways that I've got to get rid of that and, you know, suggest an even easier way that just doesn't work with my setup. First and foremost, obviously, you've got your standard fish net here. Now, this takes a long time. I'm not gonna lie to you. But basically, if you go through the tank and just stir it up, catch it with the net, you're gonna catch an amazing amount of filth in very little time. I tend to go through here and then finish it with an upward motion because that brings up some of the heavier stuff from the sump tank floor. This is real time. You can tell that has picked up a lot of, we'll call it solid waste. All I do with that is I take it over to my pill bug and sidewalk worm refuge dump it in there it gives them some moisture and some more debris to deal with I haven't heard any complaints yet another fairly straightforward way to go about this is to find yourself a little colander I like this one because it's only got the holes in the bottom take a couple of scrubby pads just cover that up and then just start pouring your water through that this is another one of those situations where it's just plain easier to use the electricity, but if you're not going to go that way, this will remove some of those solids. As a bonus, you can see all the water falling out underneath that. That's bound to be adding some dissolved oxygen to this. So I might just add, you know, a few minutes of this to my morning meditational moments with the no power aquaponic garden. Now you can see that's not picking up quite as much as I got with the net right away. But if done on a regular basis, it's going to catch enough to keep your water looking a little bit cleaner than mine does right now. The easiest way to get your solids out of a sump tank situation like this is with something that is basically an aquarium vacuum. You can find this in pet supply stores pretty easy. It doesn't work in my situation because my sump tank is directly on the ground and they do kind of require somewhere for gravity to allow it to drop below the bottom of your fish tank. But basically it's a big fat pipe with a hose at the top of it and um, try and find one with a squeeze action primer. What it'll do is it'll create a draw at the bottom of your fish tank and the solids get kind of pulled up and eventually go up the tube and down into your draining bucket. So if this were off the ground, that is definitely something that I would be doing. And uh, in the ultimate setup for this, that is something I will be doing. If you don't know what I'm talking about there, just go uh, you know, online to your favorite pet store and look up aquarium vacuums or aquarium cleaning supplies and you'll undoubtedly see what I'm talking about. All right, so let's talk about just plain water for a second here. There are a lot of opinions both ways about water top-ups and water changes. I, I'm i a water changes kind of guy. I like to take out a little bit and use it on the soil garden, and I'm going to be using it on the indoor garden this winter, and top it up with fresh water just to help kind of balance the chemistry out. With the no-power aquaponic system, it's a good idea to do this probably, I'd say, at least once a week. Um, you know, if you're really worried about water consumption, do it once every couple of weeks. But it is a good idea to make sure that you're taking some of the old water out and putting new water in. 
because in the no power system there's going to be additional buildups of those things that are dangerous to your fish and dangerous to your plants that just aren't going to be getting dealt with through the normal mechanical filtration process of a more advanced and powered aquaponic garden. Unless you're incredibly lucky, most city water comes with chlorine in it. This is not going to be good for your fish, it's not going to be good for your plants, and most importantly, it's not going to be good for your bacterial colony because this will wipe it out, pretty much guaranteed. You've got a couple of options there. You can either put in some sort of chemical to bind the chlorine and take it out of the water, or most of the time you can let it sit for a good 24 hours and that'll dissolve the chlorine in the water through a more natural means. I tend to just let it sit there for a day or two and pop it in as I take water out for other gardens. Like most things, I'm just trying to keep it pretty simple. Alright everybody, well I gotta get back to cleaning the solids out of my no power garden. So I'm gonna say that's it for this particular video. Thanks for joining me in the greenhouse and uh, you know, thanks for taking an interest in the no power aquaponic garden. If you've got something set up similar and you're trying it, please let me know in the comments below how things are going. And uh, as always, have yourselves a fantastic day.